Hello and welcome. This video is an introduction to adaptive layouts in WX widgets. So far, when creating user interfaces, we've used absolute positioning and a fixed size for all controls. But that comes with some problems. The most obvious one is that the UI does not scale well. So let's look at some strategies we can use to make this better. Here is a very simple application. The mainframe has an initial client size of 1000 by 600. It contains a panel with one child button. I position the button at the center of the window with a width of 250, 25% of the window width, and a height of 100. Here's what it looks like. I want the button to always stay in the center and its width should always be 25% of the window width. But currently, when I resize the window, that does not happen. That's because the button has an absolute position and a fixed size. One quick and dirty thing you can do is just to prevent the window from resizing at all. Let me show you that before we make something adaptive. The frame constructor accepts a style parameter. By default, it is default frame style, which is a combination of all of these styles. If we remove both maximize box and resize border from this style, then the window can no longer be resized. This may be okay for some very simple applications, but in general, it's pretty bad. So let's make the window resizable again. Next, we'll try to implement an adaptive layout manually by using size events. I'll go to the header file for mainframe and declare an event handler called onResize. It must take a size event parameter. Now I'll hit control dot and create a definition for this method. In mainframe's constructor, I'll bind the event handler to the size event. On resize will now be called whenever the window is resized. Inside that method, we can get the new client size of the window. and use it to calculate the new size for the button. Twenty-five percent of the window width and a fixed height of 100. Next, we calculate the new X and Y position for the button. This will place it at the center of the window. Finally, we update the button size and position to the calculated values. And call event.skip just in case something else wants to handle the event. Now the button stays in the center and its width is always 25% of the window width. So implementing adaptive layouts manually like this can work, but it is not the way to go. Not only is this way too error prone for complex layouts, there is also another problem. When using absolute positioning, it's quite easy to design UIs which look good on one platform 
but not on another. This login form looks fine on Windows, but the same form on Linux looks terrible. The login text is clipping, and the username and password text overlap the input fields because Linux uses a larger default font size than Windows. To fix both the scaling issue and handle small platform differences with ease, we must stay away from absolute positioning and use so-called sizers instead. With sizers, you define the layout for your application at a higher level, without absolute positioning. When the window is resized, the sizers automatically adjust the position and size of your controls. Sizers also handle platform differences much better. Here is the login form again, this time implemented using sizers. In the next video, I'll show you what sizers are and how to use them. Specifically, we'll look at the box sizer. See you then.